<laughs> My name is Dean Bettinger, and I'm the Storage Technology Business Development Manager for CX Tech. Uh, I've been with CX Tech for 12 and a half years now. Uh, the first six years of which I ran our uh, infrastructure group at CX Tech, and then the next five I was director of IT. And during the time I was director of IT, I was uh, pestering my uh, boss at the time, Barbara Ashkin, our COO, for CX Tech to get into storage more seriously. And I pestered and pestered and pestered. And one day, a year ago, January, she says, you know, you're right, we're going to do it. And you're the man to do it. <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> so, uh, and uh, it took me a few months to see that uh, she was right, but she was absolutely positively right. Storage has always been uh, a great passion of mine. And uh, uh, so we, at the time, we have one storage product, and now we've expanded. We have many storage products, from very small to very large. Uh, and uh, as you can see today, we have three different storage vendors on the floor, plus uh, uh, the Citrix uh, virtualization vendor was there as well. So a little bit about CX Tech. I think by this point, you probably know a lot about us. We're a worldwide value added reseller for network voice and data equipment, uh, both new and certified pre-owned uh, with our equal to new uh, uh, brand name, where we have a very rigorous certification process and an unrivaled uh, warranty in the industry. Uh, we also have our Cable Express cables, including fiber jumpers, which uh, I sell a good bit of in, in storage, and also uh, new and equal to new uh, fiber channel switches, post plus adapters, and SFPs. We're well over $100 million in annual sales, we've been on the bar 500 for eight years, and we're an ISO uh, certified organization. Over 300 employees, four consecutive years on the Great Places to Work uh, Institute's top 25 companies, and so CX Tech is a great place to work and a great company uh, to uh, serve your needs. A little bit uh, Here's the, the agenda. We're going to talk about uh, storage virtualization, which uh, I call the other virtualization. And we'll talk a little, a little bit about uh, what it is, and then uh, varying degrees of storage virtualization. And then we're going to take a little bit of a sidetrack into uh, disk array performance factors. And then we're going to talk about the advanced features that are enabled by storage virtualization. That's really the exciting part. Uh, at the end, we're going to compare uh, several interesting products. Uh, coincidentally, uh, CX, Tell sells, CX Tech sells all of those uh, products. And uh, you can interrupt me with questions at any time, if you like, or save them to the end, either way. So, the other virtualization. Server virtualization, as we're all aware, is the practice of partitioning a single server so that it appears as multiple servers. And this is a very old practice. IBM invented this concept back in the mid-1960s with mainframes. And you could partition a mainframe and run multiple operating systems on it at the same time. Uh, and then they came along with their uh, VMCMS operating system. And you could run that as the base of many different types of operating systems on top. So it's an old concept that's been uh, made new again over the last decade. Storage virtualization is also an old concept. It is the process of abstracting logical storage from physical storage. The term uh, is used these days to describe this abstraction at any layer of the hardware or uh, software storage stack. So what is storage virtualization? It's a whole wide variety of things. Uh, Host-based software virtualization. So if you have a, a workstation with two disk drives in it and you do software mirroring on it like you do with say NT workstation back in the day, that is storage virtualization. You're mirroring drives through software. Uh, and it's long been the concept uh, in, in Unix systems uh, to have a logical volume manager where you can take a, a group of a, a disk array or disk drives that are attached and put them together, rate them up however you like, carve up that storage and use it. So that's the software based Hardware-based RAID controllers have been around for a long time. These days, it's difficult to buy a server that doesn't have an onboard RAID controller where you, you can at least uh, mirror a couple drives very often you can do a variety of different RAID types. Uh, then uh, we have array-based storage area networks, and that's what the bulk of this talk is about. Uh, there is also network-based storage virtualization where 
put a device in your storage network that all your storage traffic passes through. And on the back side, so you've got servers here, you've got your virtualization device, and then over here, you have a bunch of different storage arrays, maybe from different manufacturers. And they all get presented as one virtual uh, hunk of storage carved up and pre presented to the servers on this side. And there's two types, both in-band and out-of-band. So in the in-band, all the data passes through that appliance. Well, that virtualization appliance better be a pair of redundant appliances at, at least, right? Uh, because it's there very important. If that were to fail, then you have no access to your, to your storage. But it's so the data passes through there, and reads and writes come from here, and then this appliance determines where on the back end storage they need to go. And you can move that, those blocks around on the various different pieces of storage uh, live in production, and the servers don't know that you've done that. So that's the in-band, and then there's an out-of-band appliance where your main data path is here, but say you go up here, there may be, you ask to read a block, you, you submit the read request here for a small packet, and then the virtualization appliance tells the disk arrays to send the response to that <coughs> to the server. So you're out of the data path, but every read and write is interacting with the uh, virtualization appliance. Uh, another hot topic these days is virtual tape libraries, deduplication, appliances, and that's another form of uh, storage virtualization. But we're not talking about that much about it today. Now there are varying degrees of uh, storage virtualization. And I'm not referring to a VS, everybody knows what VS is, or more of the same, or piled higher or deeper. Uh, this is varying degrees of storage virtualization. So the first degree, you have just a direct attached uh, software or hardware based RAM. Very simple been around forever. The second degree, you take your disk drives out of your servers and you concentrate them uh, in an array on a uh, separate storage network. Generally it's a separate, usually it's a fiber channel or an iSCSI separate, uh, separate network. Now the third degree of storage virtualization, which not every vendor has achieved in my opinion, uh, is full utilization of all the hardware that you, you purchase for each volume. So in the standard uh, uh, old guard way of thinking about storage, bank, you had a server, say an exchange server, you got three drive, rate or hand, rate five. And those three drives, if they were SATA drives, they could do about 100 IOs per second. So that volume is capable of about 300 IOs a second. Supposing somebody comes along and does a big search and now you need 500 items a second. What's going to happen? Things are going to bog down for a while until all those uh, requests uh, subside. Helpline's going to ring. People are going to be upset. Uh, you're not going to be happy. And uh, so to rectify that, so you, the way to do that would be to say, all right, three drives is enough. Now I'll, I'll go out and, and uh, get five drives. So I dump everything off the data get all the data off there, back up the tape a couple of times, put in a couple more drives, reformat that as a five drive, rate five, now you can do 500 items a second, put the data back and away you go. So that's kind of the old way to do things. So when SANS first came about, and many SANS vendors uh, still do the same sort of thing, they take those three drives out of that server, and they put it in an array. Now you have a disk array, maybe you've got 40 drives or something in there, and they'll say, these three drives are dedicated to that server. What's, what's different? Not a whole lot, right? Uh, yeah. the, the drives are remote, and so that's good, uh, but you haven't changed the performance characteristic a whole lot. 